After Be Quiet had their rampage of RG poopifying everything, they are finally done and have come to their senses. Meet the Be Quiet Fear Loop 2 in 280mm, the one that we wished would have been released initially, but yeah, somebody wasn't done with whatever Be Quiet was up to. Compared to the already released Pure Loop 2 FX line, there isn't much of a difference as a whole. The radiator seems to be pretty much identical, at about 20 fins per inch, the water block also seems identical, still copper nickel plated and 53.8mm in every direction. We still got that inline 5500 rpm PVM pump and we still got the 400 mm long, nicely braided and good looking adjustable tubes. To nobody's surprise, the pump cover also remains the same. Still very clean, still very be quiet -y like with that brushed aluminum and we still got that thin, nice looking 3-pin ARGB controllable line going all around it. All looking very nice and nothing to nag. So what did actually change? The fans. Compared to the FX line, we are now looking at Be Quiet's newest Pure Wings 3 in 140mm high speed. These are 9 heavily bent wings designed 140mm fans that are spinning up to 1800 rpm over a regular 4-pin PVM connection. And obviously they've got no RGB and they are looking a lot more similar to Be Quiet's current Silent Wings 4 lineup than to the FX ones. To be exact, they look like the, yeah, I don't want to say it, but cheap version of that. And that makes sense. These are pure wings and pure wings or Be Quiet Pure whatever was always the more budget focused line. However, in contrast to the Silent Wing 4 high speed or any Silent Wing 4 in 140, Be Quiet made some heavy changes on the wing design. Probably because somebody wasn't happy how the Silent Wings 4 in 140 performed, but that's just guessing. Anyway, we got a problem today and that is that I have no documentation on these fans and because they haven't been released yet as like an independent product, the only comparison to the Pure Loop 280FX that we can do is the fact that the light wings are spinning 400 rpm faster. That's all that I know or can say. How much air or how strong? No clue. But based on that one number alone and because we know how the FX fan are looking like, I guess this has slightly lower performance or max performance. But before we get to that, the Pure Loop 2 in 280 comes in the same package as the FX did. A slightly different design, sure, but we still got the 221 PVM splitter installation material for all the currently important sockets, some thermal paste and a bottle of Be Quiet cooling liquid because Be Quiet AIOs can easily be drained and filled using that fill port in the radiator. Never used, but cool to have. To install the Pure Loop on an AMD, we first need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and from there we can slap on the AMD spacers followed by the brackets with the centerpiece pointing towards the CPU and screw them down. Over on Intel we need to take the provided backplate and shove the Intel screws through them and then securing them on the other side using the rubber washers. Out of position for LGA 1700 and inner one for anything else. Once behind the motherboard we can screw in the double sided thread screw thingies for Intel, slap the brackets on top with the ends pointing towards the CPU and secure that one too. From there on both platforms some thermal paste followed by screwing down the water block. And now let's get to the benchmarks. As with every cooler we benchmark the Pure Loop 2 in 280mm on three separate workloads. On top of a 3900K, a 120 workload to represent smaller chips, a 250 workload for some heavy workloads and 320 for the folks that want to see their coolers cry. At 120 watts, the Pure Loop 2 in 280 managed to keep the CPU at exactly 29 degrees C above ambient. And at that point, yeah, there is a lot of explanation necessary from my side. At the beginning of the video, I said I expect that the Pure Loop 2 to 80 to perform slightly below the FX due to the slower fan speed, which does make a lot of sense. However, already at the 120 watts workload, the non-FX was already 2.5 degrees C behind, which was odd, yes, but explainable. At 120 watts, all AIOs are just fiddling around. Nobody is really working here. But at 250 watts, that difference became 7.2 degrees C. And that was way too much. 7.2 
into the other direction would have been somewhat explainable because the fans are spinning slower, but not this way around. So I started to investigate and unfortunately I found an issue. Back then when we were benchmarking the Lee and Lee Trinity 2 lineup, I noticed that if the pump had both SATA and PVM power and or to control connected, the pump would throttle down to some random number. So back then we benchmarked only using the SATA power connection to keep it at max speed all the time. However, in the midst of that and because there were very few AIOs that have been benchmarked to that point, I internally switch the port which will from that moment on power the pump. Initially we used the port below the CPU and now we are using the port next to the CPU fan header. And as it turns out, for whatever reason that I cannot explain, this port keeps the pump of the Pure Loop 2 spinning at 4500 RPM and this one at the officially rated 5500 RPM. Both are set to 100% full blast. No idea why this is happening, they are both set to the same thing in BIOS, they shouldn't be doing it, but that's what happens. Now, how I proceeded was to re-benchmark the FX Pure Loop 281 that we have to get the correct number. And lo and behold, the FX is indeed performing marginally better than the non-FX, which makes total sense now. For the 250 watts workload, it's a different story and a quite interesting one to see, but the difference is now substantially smaller, making a lot more sense. So why am I telling you this instead of just replacing the numbers and for future reviews and then never talk about it again? Because I don't want to hide stuff, a mistake did happen here, and I don't want anybody to take a graph from an older video and newer video and then wonder why stuff has changed. And I also don't want to be unfair towards Be Quiet's Pure Loop 2 FX because now there are graphs out there released by me with wrong data on it. Sure, the FX was never the focus when showing any of the benchmark graphs. The initial review was done with an old setup, so there everything was correct, but I think addressing it in here is the bare minimum for me. What we also did is double check the results of the Silent Loop 360 and they were fine. That one was also benchmarked on the upper port. And the same goes for everything that has been benchmarked after the Li and Li 2 lineup. So basically the whole graph at this point. The problem is I'm not sure about the Arctic Liquid Freezer lineup. For everything else I can guarantee that the header has already been changed. But I do not remember when exactly the LFs have been benchmarked. So for the rest of the benchmark section please ignore the LFs up until we had the time to benchmark all of them again and if necessary repair the graphs to what they should have been from the beginning. And for the numbers of the Pure Loop 2 FX280, for today we will keep them in the graph as original and corrected, but moving forward the old one will just vanish and I hope that nobody will ever talk about this mistake ever again. So let's finally get to some numbers. At 120 watts workload the Pure Loop 2 to 80 using the Pure Wings 3 had an exceptionally good result. At 29 degrees C above ambient it is at the top of our benchmark list. But what about the noise? Good, as in good, but not as good. Although the Pure Loop 2 FX and Pure Loop 2 are very close performance-wise, the Pure Loop fans seem to be slightly louder, making the FX line the overall winner. But funnily enough, compared to even bigger 360mm coolers like the Kuga Poseidon 360, the Pure Loop 280 showed its worth keeping it fairly quiet from start to finish. Over at the 250W workload, the difference between the Pure Loop 2 and Pure Loop 2 FX switched, with the new one being 2.1 degrees C above ambient ahead of the RG Poop one, which is very interesting and I guess the new fans have a higher static pressure, which I would love to tell you, but I have no spec sheet for them. But for now, it seems to be the better one once the workload is pushed up. Another interesting comparison is the Silent Loop 2 360. Although it's bigger, it's starting to fall behind once the load 
gets to 250, even if it has 3120mm fans. And yes, we recheck these results, they are accurate. Over on the 250 noise to performance chart, we can see that the new 280mm Pure Loop actually performs substantially better than expected. So good, in fact, that it very briefly overtook the Leon Lee Galahad to Trinity at 360 at its max fan speed. After that, it falls quite quickly behind until the FX version takes over at about 70% of the max fan speed. Compared to the Silent Loop 2 360, we can actually see what is happening. This is what it looks like if the heat cannot be carried away from the CPU. You can push the fan speed down and down and down, but nothing really changes. Up until the fans are spinning slow enough so that the bottleneck isn't the water block anymore. But overall, the Pure Loop 2 in 280 compares relatively well. Now, thanks to the now normal spinning pump, we found that the Pure Loop 2 to 80 line is actually capable of keeping a CPU from thermal throttling at a 320 watts workload. At that moment, the Pure Loop 2 keeps the CPU at 76.5 degrees C above ambient. Again, at roughly the same distance to the FX version as we have seen on the 250 watts workload. But compared to everything, it's a fantastic result. Even competing with Lee and Lee's Galahad to Trinity and outperforming a bunch of 360s like the Kuga Poseidon. Again, the Silent Loop 2 360 or the Geometric Future Eskimo Junior Neon 36. Wow, that's still a very long name. But you can see now why I'm saying that ignoring the LF line is a quite good idea for now. I was quite sure that they were benchmarked using the other header, but after seeing that a 280 AIO beat a 421, sure, it could be that the cold plate is, or this cold plate is, out of this world, and the Arctic one is just crap, but I seriously doubt that, and we just need to recheck everything for the next time. But the noise to performance grab of the Pure Loop 2 at 360 watts looks quite interesting. As on the 250 watts workload, the FX line is behind at max speed, but once the fans are pushing equal amounts of air at equal force, the FX line keeps a better ratio which stays relatively equal to the Galahad 2. So where do we stand performance-wise? As a whole, a very excellent result. And compared to the FX version, it's very interesting. The FX is slightly better at noise 2 performance all across the board, and the regular one has a little bit more oomph on the high end. Not a lot, sometimes 2 degrees C at max if the load is high enough, but still. If you're about to choose between the two, one is slightly better for your ears and the other one is slightly better for your chip. Even if the fans are spinning slower, which is quite interesting. Compared across an army of coolers, they stand very, very strong. Not quite the Galahad, but ridiculously close considering we are comparing a 280mm to a 360. And compared to the Silent Loop 2 in 360, the 280 pure one is just flat out better. Probably because one of them is quite a lot newer and therefore might have like the better pump and the better cold plate. Probably, but not necessarily. So where do we stand? As a product, sure, my absolute recommendations. And right now I can get this one for about 100 euros, which is very fine in my opinion. Great quality, great performance, great noise. No reason to say no. And actually for anything like I or R3579, this thing can handle some stuff. As a last point, I need to mention something before we end this. On my particular unit, the fan threads are not cut quite accurately. From the front, it's fine, a bit of pushing, but the fans will go in or the, the screw will go into the thread with the fan in between. But on the back side, there are the threads along the long side of the red are about one to two millimeters away from where they should have been, leading to mounting the fan slightly offset and then even with an overhang on the, on the other side. I've passed the message to be quiet and they checked random boxes across the warehouse as well as the samples that got out to other reviewers. And for now, except for my unit, not a single one had it. So this doesn't seem to be a widespread issue. This is a my unit thing, making this a quality control issue. But nevertheless, this sucks. 
and something somewhere needs to be adjusted so that one crooked unit becomes zero crooked units. But considering you could get that thing replaced for free, it's not that much of a deal. But hey, my unit might be unable to do push-pull, but in the very least I have a unique sample now. Yay. But for today, this is going to be it for Be Quiet and their Pure Loop 2 into 80mm. And at this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to hire somebody who will stand next to me whilst doing benchmarks, and every time I forget about the header thing, I will get a lovely smack. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the NRMAX T50. That thing has a weird thing mounted to the back, and it doesn't really help at all, but it's interesting. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.